Well, the Palestinian observer to the United Nations, Riyad Mansour, is speaking out against Israel's military response to the Hamas terror attacks. History for some media and politicians start when Israelis are killed. We know only too well that the messages about Israel's right to defend itself will be interpreted by Israel as license to kill, to pursue on the very path that led us here. The death toll is rising on both sides, with more than 700 people confirmed dead in Israel, nearly 500 Palestinians killed. The UN estimates that more than 123,000 Palestinians have already been displaced since the fighting began on Saturday. Joining us now is Palestinian-American Middle East analyst Omar Badar. Uh, Omar, I appreciate your time. To start with the timing, I think the big question has been the surprise and how, how did this happen? How was Israel caught so off guard? But what's your sense in terms of the timing as why it happened now? Um, I think the timing is inherently random because otherwise it would not be a successful surprise attack. And I just want to mention that obviously what we've saw, what we've seen out of it has been absolutely horrific. I've been listening to your previous guests who are talking about um, not being able to find their children, and that's yeah. absolutely heartbreaking. I'm the father of two little children, and I can't imagine how I would feel if they were kidnapped and I did not know where they were. But the real scandal here is that this is every bit as horrific as it is predictable and preventable. A lot of people are talking about this as an intelligence failure, but I think there's a much more fundamental failure of common sense, that you can put millions of Palestinians under indefinite military occupation and a system of apartheid as recognized by every major human rights organization in the world, where Israel commits daily war crimes against Palestinians everywhere, land theft, lack of access to water, dropping bombs indiscriminately on civilian areas, and to think that this is a situation that's not going to eventually lead to an explosion. Is, is absolutely insane. This is absolutely predictable. We were obviously heading towards eventually a, a, a disaster of, of this kind. And now all of this direction towards further militarism and, and further violence is obviously not going to lead to anything better because that is exactly the track that got us here. I think that is absolutely correct. We need a real meaningful solution to the underlying injustice that drives this violence. And that has to mean that Palestinians get to be live free of Israeli control and occupation. Omar, you just heard from Michal and David Avramov searching desperately for their 20-year-old son. They are one of many, at least 100 hostages being held at this moment. This is what the spokesman for the IDF, Lieutenant Colonel Hecht, said overnight. We don't focus our attacks on women and children. Um, we'll do everything we can to minimize collateral damage, but again, we are at war with Hamas. And sadly, there's, sadly there might be uh, people that are involved killed. It's not, it won't be intentional. And sadly, Hamas have entrenched themselves in a cynical way within the civilian uh, population. You have said that this conflict cannot be solved militarily. How do you see this ending? Where do you see this going? I mean, look, there's all these pronouncements about the need to, that they're going to do everything they can to avoid civilian casualties. It is really worth emphasizing here that Israel has bombed Gaza many, many times before, and Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International, and even Israeli human rights organizations like B'Tselem, say that this is not at all what Israel's conduct is. There isn't an effort to minimize civilian casualties, that there is mass indiscriminate bombing of civilian areas. And frankly, we're watching that unfold right now as well. Um, the policy is essentially to, pan to punish the entire Palestinian population, cutting off electricity to all of Gaza, preventing anybody in Gaza from coming in and out. This is an act of collective punishment, and this is exactly the trajectory that we unfortunately are on. I think what we're going to see is much greater death um, that's going to cover the entire Gaza Strip. And at the end of it, Palestinians are going to remain a population that is captive and under an illegal siege, as recognized by the UN, and we're only setting ourselves up towards another round of this in the future. What we need right now is the world community to come together and start dealing with this issue seriously, understanding that this policy of giving Israel a carte blanche to behave however it wants towards Palestinians um, is not a, a way to actually achieve long-lasting peace. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. The one thing that has not been tried so far is allowing Palestinians to be free of Israeli occupation and military dictatorship. Um, and until we start taking Palestinian grievances seriously 
until Israel starts seeing Palestinians as equal human beings who are deserving of the same human rights and decency and dignity that Israelis enjoy. I'm afraid we're going to be stuck in this situation for a very, very long time. Omar Bedar, thank you for joining us this morning.